Hey everybody, it's Marcos Viegas. Uh, welcome to another edition of Fight Up TV Live over here on the YouTube channel. I uh, want to go ahead and welcome to you guys. Today is Tuesday, June 6th, as we are live here in California. Beautiful 75 degree weather over here. Um, as we're going to go ahead and discuss this weekend's uh, action in the uh, combat sports world. Going to go ahead and touch on the uh, UFC uh, main event uh, that happened uh, between Jose Aldo and uh, Max Holloway, as well as the rematch that happened between Adonis Stevenson and Andres Fonfara, as well as uh, touching on uh, a few other things. Uh, Adrian Broner training like uh, Juan Manuel Marquez, um, as well as uh, opening it up to you guys as Q uh, as Q and A. Open it up to you guys. Uh, with your Q&A questions and stuff. So let's go ahead and uh, get this started uh, for you guys that are just um, tuning in. Um, I, I am, a, like I mentioned in freaking every video that I do, uh, I'm a combat sports fan. Um, I love MMA, I love boxing, and I love kickboxing. So uh, as you see these videos, we're, we're always going to touch on everything that happens in, in the combat sports world. And it's so weird doing this because... I'm supposed to uh, look at the little camera that's right over here and it just feels weird because I can't see my face but when I look at my face it looks like I'm like looking in a different direction but uh, whatever all right let's get ahead and uh, get us started uh, Aldo versus Holloway uh, I happened to see the fight <clears throat> honestly felt that uh, Jose Aldo looked really good for the first two rounds um, you know it, it didn't look like he had any I guess things going wrong for him other than the leg kicks. The leg kicks were, were missing throughout the whole three rounds of the fight. Uh, even in the first one or two minutes, I was kind of wondering where the heck are all those leg kicks? Why isn't he leg kicking this guy? Uh, so, you know, I think it's still a question that a lot of people are kind of scratching their heads and thinking, you know, what was up with Jose Aldo? Only him and his team would know uh, really uh, if they even um, – implemented or plan to implement it. I like to think that they did plan to Im intimate, uh, implement the uh, leg kicks, seeing that the leg kicks are a main part of Jose Aldo's game. And I just don't understand how you would enter a fight and go into a fight and not use your best weapon uh, in that fight. So the other thing, too, that I, I felt, uh, or not felt, but uh, found interesting in the fight, too, was... Uh, and I kind of thought this after the uh, whole McGregor situation is I don't think Aldo's the same since that McGregor loss. Uh, and there's a few reasons why. Uh, and I went ahead and enlisted them. There's actually like five reasons why I don't think Aldo's the same after uh, that McGregor knockout. And yeah, I, I know you guys are all going to say, well, wait a second, you know. Frankie Edgar, he looked great in that fight, man. Well, how can you say that McGregor ruined... Jose Aldo, no way, you don't know what you're talking about, Marcos, you're retarded, like, no. Um, no, you know, this is what uh, I mean by that, and, and I'll get to that. First off, I don't think Frankie Edgar was a good barometer to really see where Jose Aldo was at, given the main reason was Frankie El Edgar is not a huge puncher, so he's not going to test that chin the way that other big punchers uh, are going to test that chin like McGregor and like Max Holloway. Uh, and we saw what happened when a, a big puncher, Max Holloway, went ahead and tested that chin. Uh, look what happened. The first big puncher he fought after McGregor because Frankie Edgar is not a big puncher. Look what happened to Jose Aldo. He got knocked out. All right. So the other thing is uh, once you get knocked out like that, the way that Jose Aldo got knocked out, uh, a check left hook, and then he fell face first, and then Connor went in and hammer fisted him. Sometimes the chin can't take the punishment that it used to be able to. Uh, case in point that makes this uh, real clear to you guys and to new fans that are watching is what happened with Roy Jones Jr. when he got knocked out uh, at the end of his career by... Um, Tarver, I was brain farting there, guys. Sorry, I apologize that. Tarver, um, you know, and since the Tarver, Tarver knockout, Roy was never the same. Another guy that was like that, Chuck Liddell. Every time Chuck Liddell uh, got tested chin-wise after that Rampage knockout, 
he just was never the same. So certain guys, they're just never the same. Once you test and check that chin, they just can't recover like they used to or take the punch uh, like they used to in previous fights. Also, you know, when you're Jose Aldo and you dominate for like 10 years, all right? And you could use this example in boxing as well. When you're a fighter that dominates for as long as you do, you start buying into the hype of you being untouchable and you not being able to get touched by guys. Like you really start buying into it. Like you know what? No one can hurt me. There's no way anybody can hurt me. Look, look what I'm doing to these guys. I'm I'm murking fools left and right. You know. Um, and I'm just seeing a comment. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and answer this comment. Aldo didn't throw leg kicks because he wanted a box. He wanted to test himself. No, man. You don't ever go into a fight saying that you want to do one thing. Like, especially with a big puncher uh, like Holloway. No. You know, honestly, and if they planned and made a plan to go and box a guy that has big power like that, that was a completely wrong game plan to go ahead and do. Uh, and Admit the biggest weapon you have in your arsenal, which is your leg kicks, uh, which he didn't use whatsoever. And we saw, you know... Aldo just can't take punches like he used to, especially punches from big punchers, you know. Back to the point I was making, when you start buying your own hype, you think you're untouchable. We saw it uh, happen to Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson had this aura of he couldn't be touched, he couldn't be knocked out. People would step in the ring and they would buy into that aura and be like, man, like, how am I going to beat this guy? Uh, and then we saw what happened to Tyson after Buster Douglas when Buster Douglas exposed his flaws. A, uh, another good example of this was Roy Jones Jr. Uh, you could say too, you know, uh, Ricky Hatton. Ricky Hatton was never the same after that Floyd loss. After Floyd checked him, knocked him out, he was never the same. So you lose that confidence, that that aura that, you know, you, no one's on your level. You, you start losing it and you start doubting it and it just really shatters your confidence. Another perfect example of that is what happened with Ronda Rousey uh, when she got knocked out by Holly Holm. She goes into this Amanda Nunez fight. The same thing. The chin's not the same, not able to take the same punishment. And it just was a different Ronda. It wasn't the, the same Ronda that had that same type of swagger uh, coming into these fights. So, uh, you know, at, at this point, it's kind of hard to say where does Jose Aldo go from here. Uh, I know a lot of people would not disagree with the notion that retirement might be a good option. I, I think, you know, to really, really get your answer, even though I kind of have a hunch about it, go up and... and Fight another top five guy and see how that chain, uh, that chin, really is, and then you'll really get your answer. Though I really, really think, since that McGregor fight, Aldo, Aldo's just not the same. McGregor just broke his confidence, just broke his spirit so bad in, in that fight, and I think it, it's always going to play a factor in the fights. Okay, another example of that Holloway, Holloway, I think like in the second round, he started taunting him, messing with him, and when I saw that. And I saw that Jose Aldo wasn't doing anything. I was just like, geez, this is not good, man. This is like McGregor flashbacks in terms of the taunting and all that. So uh, Max Holloway versus Frankie Edgar, they're saying. I think that's a dope fight. I think that's a fight that Edgar could win uh, with his wrestling, with his speed, with his movement. But Holloway is a big, big puncher. Uh, and he's herky-jerky style. He has good taunting. Uh, taunting. I saw your taunting comment, Lewis. That's why I said taunting. Uh, he has good timing. Very, very good timing, but he's very herky-jerky. He's a weird guy to get your rhythm, in. and if you move the textbook way, it's very hard to get off your shots against a Max Holloway. It's all good, Lewis. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, I think the Holloway Edgar is a good fight, and I think they should do it in Hawaii. There's a, a big MMA scene in Hawaii. Uh, we used to... Uh, not house, but we used to upload the just scrap fights that would happen in Hawaii years and years ago. Uh, we had a, a guy who did some excellent, excellent work for us uh, whose name Ken Yates uh, that would uh, cover the MMA scene over there in Hawaii. And uh, a lot of good fights that we have up uh, on uh, the YouTube channel here on Fight Hub of uh, the just scrap fights um, over there in Hawaii. And I want to say there was, ah oh, man, we had another promotion there that we would uh, air their fights, but uh, I apologize. I'm, I don't remember it. So with that, let's go ahead and transition over to boxing now. Over the weekend on Showtime, Adonis Stevenson and Andres Fonfara rematched in a fight that honestly no one really wanted, no one uh, asked for, and no one was really interested in. And uh, 
Well, it became apparent why no one was interested in this uh, fight. And uh, the Neo 8585, you're crazy. No one believes you at all. Um, but no one asked for this fight with uh, Fonfara because they wanted to see a guy like Joe Smith Jr., uh, maybe even uh, Shawnee Monahan, go ahead and fight. Uh, <laughs> you guys crack me up with these. <laughs> with these comments does the fit girl behind the gloves smell nice <laughs> you guys are terrible man uh all right i gotta focus gotta focus gotta focus uh man i'm saying us a lot because you guys are <laughs> are messing with me man she jesus christ stevenson from far showed why that no one was interested because look how quick it took adonis stevenson to knock out from Farah, which to me told me two things. One, Fonfara had no business um, getting a rematch because there was other guys more deserving than Fonfara to get this title fight. Uh, guys like Arthur Berdebiev, um, Joe Smith Jr., Shawnee Monaghan. Uh, these guys should have gotten that fight and I, don't, I have no idea why they went with Fonfara. Now, let me say this about Fonfara. I've always considered Fonfara to be a good little fighter. He, I don't consider him to be a bum. He's not some slouch that sucks. He has skills. He, he's good. Technically, when you see him fight, he does things right. And he doesn't really do anything bad. Like, he, he's just, overall, he's pretty solid, you know. So, I don't want to knock on from far. And I think, you know, what it showed that even at 40, Stevenson has massive power still. And Stevenson, regardless of who he's fought in the past, can still knock out any of the top five guys because of his power. And he dispatched the Fonfara a lot quicker and a lot easier the second time around. So I think if anything, and it's kind of hard, I think, for any fans that have been following Adonis Stevenson to really give him much credit given the competition he's had. And, you know, he's just a fighter. He just fights. That's what he's been saying this whole time. And, yeah, you know what? It is true. You know, they just signed the fights and he just fights. I, I, I can see that from that point. But also th there should come a moment as a fighter where you should be able to demand what kind of fight you want. Because the paying public that pays to see your fights, that tunes in to watch your fights, are demanding you fight a certain person. It's uh, like uh, supply and demand. Like us as consumers, we demand a, a company to make a certain product or a video game company to make a, a sequel to a video game. If the demand, the demand, the demand... Uh, is there they're gonna go ahead and listen and, and do it because you you're paying for their product it's the same thing with boxing and, and mma we're paying in terms of tickets we're paying in terms of the cable bills we pay and the pay-per-view money that we pay to see you fight on a consecutive basis and i think the best thing you should do for that paying public is to give them the fights that we want to see you guys involved in. So with that, it brings me to the point that uh, a lot of criticism has been given over to Adonis, Steven, uh, Adonis Stevenson. Sorry, guys. Uh, long day. I'm doing like two-a-day workouts now uh, to kind of lose some weight. And I, I'm just, I'm dying, dude. I, I'm, I'm on fumes uh, this whole time. So I apologize if I sound um, stupid. Slurry, uh, low energy, uh, stumbling uh, across my words. I'm not going to throw in the towel yet, man. I can still go one round, one more round, one more round. Don't stop it. Um, but that's the main reason why people don't take Adonis Stevenson seriously is because of the competition that he's fought up to this point. Before the Chad Dawson fight, he was knocking people out left and right, left and right, left and right. And they were like in the top uh, five ranked in his division. He beats Chad Dawson and he had a lot of momentum. And I just think that, you know, they never built on that momentum. And it was bad management uh, on that end. And, uh, you know, he suffered because he's kind of toiling in obscurity now. You know, no one mentions him in the light heavyweight uh, picture because he doesn't fight the top guys. He hasn't had a chance to fight the top guys. You know, Kovalev doesn't really mention him. Ad uh, Andre Ward doesn't really mention him. Just overall in the conversation for the 175-pound uh, title picture, he's never mentioned because... Just these fights aren't happening with him. And I think his post-fight interview was a perfect example of why people have criticized Adonis Stevenson. I'm not saying me. 
I'm saying why fans have criticized Adonis Stevenson when he was pressed into what fights he wants. He didn't call anybody out. He didn't call Kovalev out. He didn't call Andre Ward out. He didn't call out Berta Biev. And, you know, I saw that and I was like, hmm. Like, I, I just, I, I don't understand. It's like, why would you be content uh, with just fighting, you know, guys that no one's heard of? You know, like, well, why not challenge yourself? Unless you're going into it as just purely as a business sense. You just don't care who you fight. You just want to make money, which, you know what? He has every right to do. You know, he's putting his health on the line there every uh, time he fights. So he does have a right to go ahead and, and try to make the most amount of money that he can. I'm just hoping we see him go against uh, Better Biev. I think that's an awesome fight. Um, Adonis Stevenson, a big power puncher going up against a, another guy who's seen as Sergey Kovalev as this come forward Terminator type guy uh, that will challenge him and really test where he's at at this point. Um, and I think, you know, the, the light heavyweight division is a really good one right now. You got Better Biev, you got Joe Smith, you got Kovalev and Ward. Uh, all four guys, uh, great fighters. You got three killers there because Joe Smith is a freaking hell of a puncher, man. This freaking kid can can crack, man. Uh, Better Biev, the same thing. This guy can crack and, and same with Kovalev. So I'm just hoping we see Stevenson in, in these... Uh, these fights, you know, because I, I honestly still think he, he still has a lot to offer. And I think that performance with Fanfar showed that he still has a lot to offer. And that I just, I don't want to see him waste that talent with subpar, mediocre opponents. Because I, I think that he has the ability to rise to the occasion, uh, given uh, the potential fights that we can see him in. So let's hope uh, that he goes ahead and um, fights those guys. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and open up to the Q&A uh, portion of this video. Uh, I know uh, some of you guys probably tuned off because I was uh, talking about MMA. And, you know, it's called Fight Hub, not Boxing Hub. You know, Fight Hub. We like fights. So let's go ahead and open it up to you guys. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to the uh, comments or, or whichever ones uh, go ahead and pop up first. Superior Boxing Highlights. Virgil Hunter can only take care of Ward. Well, they have a, a long bond uh, between uh, each other, so I, I don't ever see them uh, breaking apart. Louis J, any info on an EA boxing game? You know what? This this kills me because I was a huge fan of the Fight Nights. I loved all the Fight Nights. I, I thought they were super fun. The UFC came out with their game, and the production team, the development team, excuse me, that was in charge of creating the Fight Nights, they switched their efforts over to creating the UFC games and they've made two UFC games now and they're teasing a third one. E3 is next week. I'm usually at all the E3 shows, but next week is the fight week for Andre Ward and uh, Sergey Kovalev. So I'm not going to be able to go to E3 this year, uh, which bums me out. But that was also my opportunity to talk to, uh, talk to the EA guys to see if um, there's any headway any developments on a new Fight Night game because I know that's something that a lot of people have demanded for for an extremely long time. This water's dope, guys. A pH water from Costco. It's a good deal and it hydrates you. It's not a spawn. Cheap plug! <laughs> Alright, you guys. Keep the questions coming. Let's see. Top ranks new, ne new network. I, I haven't heard any developments on that. I have no idea... Um, where this Manny Pacquiao fight's going to land. I'm hearing that it's not HBO and that they have a network that's in play. Could end up being Spike. I know Spike is still in the fight business. business. They've said that the if the offer's right, they're still more than willing to uh, put on fights. So uh, who, who knows really where that um, Pacquiao fight's going to end up, to be honest. I've heard they're working on a digital channel as well, uh, similar to the UFC Fight Pass and the uh, WWE Network. I think that's great, you know, it's awesome, but it's going to be limited because they're only going to have their libraries, you know, and boxing is such a big worldwide thing, unless they license the libraries of Golden Boy, Matchroom, uh, Frank Warren, all these other international promoters and the fights that happen everywhere else, I could see it being a success, but if not, then, you know, they're limited with that, even though Top Rank has a huge catalog of fights uh, from over the years. It's still only going to show certain type of guys on there, to be honest. But I think out of all the promoters, Top Rank has the most comprehensive fight catalog. 
uh, given Bob Arum promoting since what the the mid 60s I think or the somewhere I think the mid or late 60s there's been a lot of fights there so I think it's great um hey top rank give me a job man shit I'd love to do the digital shorts and, and stuff like that for, for you guys so uh, on top of the stuff that I do over here on fight hub all right guys more questions let's see I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down here and uh see what uh, you guys are saying Apple County home base. Do you think that Gustafsson is cool for running all match? You know what? I saw that. And um, I'm going to be honest. My first initial reaction was, why the fuck are you running, man? Like, what the hell? What are you doing? Like, that's kind of fucking odd. But he's always done that. Um, you know, there's a lot of space. And, and he's, well, I guess you could say he's literally running. But it's not like he's running away from the fight. Uh, he, he's just getting out of there. He just has a, a very... Unique, let's say that, unique way of uh, getting out of the way, which involves him jogging. Let's call it jogging. He's jogging when he's uh, going ahead and do that. So Gustafsson is not running. He's, he's jogging. He's, jo he's jogging out of harm's way. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, you guys. Frank Salinas, what do you think the starting price point for Canelo versus GG tickets will be? Whew. Uh, expensive. Super expensive. If you saw the uh, ticket prices for the uh, Canelo Chavez Jr., I think a little bit more than that, to be honest, because Golden Boy is uh, pushing this thing out there like it's the second coming of Mayweather uh, versus Pacquiao, which it's not. Uh, it's still going to do great, but it's not even close to being uh, to the echelon of a Mayweather-Pacquiao fight. Super huge fight, don't get me wrong, but not on the echelon of uh, Mayweather-Pacquiao, but it's going to be expensive. And uh, even the rooms, the rooms are already crazy expensive over there uh, at the MGM Grande in Las Vegas as well. I checked, I want to say, you know what? I checked the day of when the, uh, no, no, the next day when the fight was announced. Uh, I went on Hotels.com and about the average price for a hotel I saw in Las Vegas during that fight weekend was around 250 to 350 uh, around that price range. So it's going to be, it's going to be expensive, man. And that's, it sucks because the type of people you get going to the fights aren't real like hardcore fight fans they're like the casual fight fans that it's a cool event it's trending they want to be at like you know the the cool event to say they were there and it, the atmosphere really suffers you know i, I think that uh, i'm gonna how do i word this right a lot of these fights obviously it's it's all about business okay and it's about maximizing the revenue of the events and, and knowing that to a certain extent, people will pay the prices that you charge for these events. But I think the other component should be, hey, a lot of these fans have been fans of the sport for a very long time. And that it's not only the duty of the promoter, but I, I think, you know, it, it's they consume your product so much. Like, why not price more tickets at a reasonable price uh, for a lot more fans instead of closing it off for like, oh, maybe like 200 tickets that are available for $50 a pop or $100 a pop. Is it going to happen? No, man. This is a business that's run by, by money, pure money. But I think, you know, it should be considered that. Or You know what would be cool? You know what they do at soccer games? They have uh, hardcore fan cheering sections. And I think that would be cool if we saw that uh, in boxing fights. If you're like a, the GGG section or like the Canelo section, I think that would be really cool. All right, guys, keep the uh, questions coming, folks. Let's see here. Let's see what else uh, you guys are saying. Larry. Just Larry. That's that's, that's your uh, your name on YouTube. It's just Larry. That's pretty That's pretty boss, bro. Just Larry. What up? I'm Larry. Uh, no one's calling Pac-Man out because people still hate Mayweather. Pac-Man has been in a fair few boring fights lately, but is not criticized like Mayweather was. Um, the Vargas fight, did you think it was boring? I thought it was okay. You know, I, I didn't think it was like the, oh my God, like, you know, the best fight in the world, but uh, I didn't think it was a bore fest. Uh, the third fight that he had with Bradley Pacquiao was a pretty good fight. We saw a lot of knockdowns. Um, Pacquiao has always been a guy that comes forward all action. So I think that's why he doesn't get criticized because throughout his whole entire career, he's always been an action fighter and he's always uh, come forward and been wanting to engage with fights as opposed to Floyd, who
whose style is defensive, who's always wanting to get away from punches, has been criticized for that. But my whole take on that is, hey, that's, that's his game. It's your job as a fighter to stop him from implementing his game. And if you can't stop him from imp implementing his game, that's your bad, not his bad. You know, so. All right, guys. Let's see here. What else are you guys uh, telling me? Kid Stacy, Manny has a world title and should be held to championship standard, not resting on past laurels. Bingo, 100% agree with you. Uh, even though I don't think they are going to want to put him in with guys like Errol Spence and uh, Keith Thurman. I think, uh, as we're seeing right now, they're they're milking as much as uh, they can out of Manny. It's kind of like the same thing we saw with the uh, Julio Cesar Chavez farewell tour, uh, where they're just trying to get money, you know, because they know the retirement is imminent. They know that... Uh, a fight with Crawford is something that's going to happen because Top Rank wants to create a new star. And usually, how do, you, how do you create a new star? An old star passes the torch over to a new star. And I think that that's what we're going to see potentially with uh, Manny Pacquiao and Terrence Crawford. Damn, Frank got a room for $900 in the Monte Carlo. Jesus, man. I hope that's a sweet. Fuck. Did Canelo's side put in a rematch clause for the fight? Yeah, I heard that Canelo's side has a rematch. But if Gennady loses, there's no rematch clause uh, for Gennady. Who do you think will fight on the Canelo GG undercard? That's a good question. No idea. I haven't heard about uh, anything of that sort. And uh, if I get a chance to see Oscar, I'll go ahead and ask that question for you guys. Jerry Jones wanted to put the fight in Dallas, says Ron Z. He says he did, but he never put on a, um, what's it called, a bid to stage the fight. So I guess he didn't really want to have the fight, you know. Louis J, who trains the hardest out of all the fighters you've seen? No joke. The hardest training fighter I've ever seen in my life. And I've seen a lot of guys train in boxing and MMA. And that one guy that I just saw him train, and I was just like, Jesus, this is not, this is unreal. How, how does this guy train this way? There's only one guy that I've ever had that reaction with. And that one guy, you guys are going to be like, oh, man, for reals. Floyd Mayweather Jr. I've never seen a guy train the way Floyd Mayweather Jr. trained when he was training. It, it, it was... Uh, <laughs> Charlie Z. Sorry. Sorry, my bad. Charlie Z. Charlie Z. Charlie Z. I, I, I retract my statement. Charlie Z is fucking beast. Legend. You know. But in all seriousness, um, I've never seen a guy train the way that Floyd trained. You know, he would train literally, literally, uh, nonstop, three hours with no breaks. And if he did take a break, his break was like a minute. And he'd go and he'd drink soda. Or like a Gatorade. It, it, it didn't make sense. You know, He would go in and he would start on the pads. And he would just do the pad work, pad work, pad work, pad work. And, and we switch with Roger uh, doing the hand mitts to the body shield. And he would do that for, ah oh man, he, like 15 to 25 minutes. Non-stop, just back and forth. Three minutes on the pads, three minutes on the shield. Three minutes on the pad, back and forth, back and forth. And then he'd go and hit the heavy bag. No breaks. He would just go boom, 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 boom. Up to three hours. I've never seen a guy train like that ever in my whole entire life in both boxing and MMA. Um, I don't know if I'll ever see a guy train that way. I, it still trips me out. That guy trained like a freaking machine. I have no understanding as to how long it took for him to build up to that. But obviously Floyd's been doing this for a very long time. So put in a lot of time to get to that shape. And uh, with this McGregor fight, man. Um, I, one thing that Floyd is known, he does take it seriously when he fights, and he will train to be 100% in, in that fight, even though that the fight's a mismatch. Connor's going to get knocked out. Um, no competition whatsoever in, in that fight. Let's see here. Uh, what, are you, uh, what else are you guys? Kid Stacy. Glad Crawford and Ndongo are pushing for undisputed unification. More fighters should do the same, although sanctioning bodies got to be more lenient. Mm, sanctioning bodies. Mm. Uh, sanctioning bodies. I got a real thing against sanctioning bodies, man. Uh, you know what? I'm going to save my thoughts on sanctioning bodies. But I'll tell you this. It's been a good year for uh, boxing, and uh, I think uh, the general attitude with fighters is changing where they want to see unifications and they want to challenge themselves by facing the top guys 
We've seen that with Keith Thurman. We've seen that with Errol Spence. We're seeing that with Terrence Crawford. Now he's pushing for another uh, undisputed unification with Andago. He already unified with uh, Victor Postol. So we're in a good place, man, because we're seeing that across all weight divisions. We're seeing it at 140, uh, at 147, uh, at 175, at 160, uh, at heavyweight. So, man, that's it's, it's a good sign. These guys want to fight against the best in their division, and they want to unify. Uh, and, and, you know, that helps the sport because it makes it easier for the casual fans to identify when there's one world champion and not these alphabet title champions that are scattered all over the place. I think that's another reason why people respect the UFC a lot more and MMA a lot more as a sport than boxing because the number one guy fights the number one guy. And they have no choice. Dana, was, Dana says, no, you're fighting this guy whether you like it or not. Too bad. And they go ahead and they fight. And I think, honestly, that's the way it should be. That's the way that boxing was. And when all these sanctioning bodies came and it started being about business and all that, kind of took the luster off of boxing and it took the way that boxing is perceived in the casual sports landscape here in the United States because still overseas, uh, around the world, boxing is a huge sport. It, it's a mainstream sport and it's not seen the way it's seen here in the United States. Boxing has become a niche sport and uh, MMA has surpassed, I feel, boxing in many areas in terms of popularity um, given though they've learned from the mistakes that boxing has done and that's a perfect example of that of the the best fighting the best and there only being one champion and also you know they market a, a lot better than boxing even though boxing is doing a few things right like we're seeing with these unification fights and these fighters pushing for the unification fights and I'm a huge fan of uh, this Andongo Crawford unification I like Andongo I, I like seeing guys that come from out of nowhere and then they they get some shine I think you know they need to show Andongo I, I would be okay if Andongo has one one or two fights it's not Crawford to kind of build his profile up so people know who he is and then they put him in there because he has a cool personality uh, from what I've seen in interviews and I think they should do the same with uh, Inoue I think uh, HBO should start showing Inoue fights they should start building that Chocolatito super fight because that, that's another fight that would be a huge fight. And I think Anoe is a guy that could end up gaining a lot of fans because he's a super exciting guy. He knocks people out. He has just this unreal punching power, man. This little freaking guy has this unreal punching power. And he reminds me of a lot of a very raw Manny Pacquiao uh, when he was first starting out. Uh, just little things that he does reminds me of Pacquiao. And I think Anoe can be built into a big star, but they, they got to push him, man. They got to show his fights and, and all that. So, all right, guys, that's going to go ahead and uh, do it for this live chat. Go ahead and join us next Monday for another live chat. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and preview the Andre Ward versus Sergey Kovalev 2 rematch, as well as uh, things that have popped up during the week in the world of combat sports. Just want to let you guys know our uh, upload schedule for the rest of the week as I'm looking at it over here. On Wednesday, we will be uh, uploading stuff from the Brandon Rios workout that he's having uh, at his gym. On Thursday, we will be at the Bellator headquarters getting interviews and content with uh, Wanderlei Silva and Chel Sonnen. Wanderlei Silva is one of the few guys that I have not interviewed yet uh, in my time doing this stuff. I've interviewed just about every single person you could interview in both boxing and MMA. And Wanderlei Silva is one of those few guys that I have not had a chance to interview. So I'm kind of excited um, to get the chance to be able to interview him. And uh, yeah, you know, I'm pretty pumped uh, for that. On Friday, we'll be uploading more videos. Uh, probably, let me see here. Um, oh shit, tomorrow. No, no, you know what? Today, we're uploading a fight journal uh, that we did at the Andre Ward uh, workout. Jeez, let me tell you guys, that was a shit show. Not because of the workout, but because what happened to me and Tino to get to freaking Oakland. We missed our flight. We got fucking pulled out by TSA. They, they checked our bags. JetBlue uh, didn't want to refund me the money. They said if they did refund the money, they'd only pay me 100 bucks um, out of the 600 that I paid. We had to fly into San Francisco. From San Francisco, we had to take a, a lift 
from there all the way to the war gym. He had already started working out. Uh, it was just, it was a stressful day, man. But it, it made for a very uh, interesting fight journal. So that's going to be uploaded in, in actually a few hours. So make sure to keep it over here on, on the uh, YouTube channel. As well as next week, man, big fight. Sergey Kovalev, Andre Ward rematch. Expect full fight uh, coverage from us that whole week. With that being said, just want to remind you guys, go ahead and follow us at, at FightUpTV on the Instagrams and Tweetverse. Go ahead and follow me as well uh, at Hey, it's Marcos V on Twitter and on Instagram. If you want to go ahead and uh, give me a follow, give me a damn follow, guys. Come on, just give us, give me a follow. Go ahead and uh, spread the word about our channel, youtube.com slash fighthub. To all your casual combat sports fans, I'm working on getting Ayer Rodriguez, guys. So uh, keep my fingers crossed that I'm, I'm able to go ahead and get him uh, this week. Uh, he's in town, so I'm going to go ahead and, and try to uh, track him down. I'm actually going to write that. Track Yair down here on my little notes. Because uh, I kind of want to ask him, like, hey, man, the heck happened in that fight, you know, uh, against Frankie Edgar? All right, guys, Fight Up Live uh, coming to an end right here. want to thank you guys for uh, tuning in with us and uh, always supporting us, uh, not only for uh, this episode, but over the years as well. And uh, next week, big fight, Ward versus Kovalev. Wednesday, Brandon Rios content coming up. Thursday, Wanderlei Silva, Chael Sonnen press conference. Fight Journal coming up in a few short hours. Thank you guys. Super uh, stoked uh, for this week of content. And uh, most of all, I appreciate you guys tuning in at Fight Up TV at Hey It's Marcos V. Go ahead and give us a follow. All right, guys. See you all later and have the uh, have a good rest of your Tuesday. Get some tacos, guys. Get some tacos on this Taco Tuesday. And um, drink a little Corona for me because I got to lose 10 pounds. And it sucks because I'm doing two workouts a day. And I am struggling on the struggle bus. All right. Take it easy, you guys. Have a good, uh, good rest of your day.